it's Tina and I'm back and I hope you guys are all doing well and staying safe if you're also back welcome back thank you so much for joining me again but if you're new and maybe you like what you see please consider subscribing because we have tons of fun here on this channel talking about makeup and all things beauty and this video today is going to be jam-packed with a ton of new products from a brand that I had on my to-do list okay this is a brand that I wanted to check out I've heard such great things about them and I'm like okay I'm going to try them out and I am so happy I did so we're talking all about make beauty oh my god we have powders and blushes and bronzers and skincare mascara complexion products it's a whole to do all right we are going to demonstrate all the products that I picked up from the brand talk you through them and I am going to give you swatches product details all that good stuff so I will be leaving timestamps down below so you can jump ahead to whatever portion of the video you want to watch and you can also digest this video in chunks instead of watching it all the way through because it's going to be a long one and I'm also trying out a new palette I know so I figured to break up this video and not just have make beauty dominate everything which it did okay but I wanted to also try out a new eyeshadow palette from Too Faced this is the Italian spritz palette make beauty does not have eyeshadows in their line as yet fingers crossed that they will add it soon so I figured while I'm at it, let me do an eyeshadow look with this palette. So you will see this palette in action as well. I don't want to make this video any longer than it already is. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, guys. So here we are starting off with a clean, freshly washed face. And I mulled over how to best approach this video. I considered doing like a brand overview review video where I spoke to you about the brand, went through each of the products that I picked up, showed you up close shots, and of course gave you swatches. I even considered doing a haul style video where again, I just showed you the products, gave you the swatches, maybe gave you some thoughts and leaving it at that. But I figured, you know what, the best way to approach this brand and these products is to do a full demonstration, get ready with me because I have everything for a full face except for eyeshadow but I have a new palette for that so we're gonna see this palette in action as well but I figured hey that's the best way to approach this let's talk through each of the products let's talk about the brand while we apply everything to our face and you can see a demonstration in real time as well as get like the product inserts where you'll see up close swatches and all that but you'll actually see me applying the products to my skin that makes more sense to me, so that's what we're gonna do. Let's go ahead and dive right into it by starting out with the details about the brand. I'm going to apply my eyeshadow primer. This is my Urban Decay Anti-Aging Primer Potion. I applied primer to my brows from Sephora. This is discontinued, but they have a new version available. So I'm on the Make Beauty website and I'm just going to read about the brand. So it says, Look forward. We create modern personal care enhancements, utilitarian, multifunctional skincare, and cosmetic essentials designed to work seamlessly in daily rituals of makeup. Oh, I like that. That sounds nice and fresh and modern, like a modern take on makeup. Harnessing the advancements of biotechnology, we formulate with sustainable botanical materials, lab-engineered natural ingredients, and skin-compatible synthetics that go beyond the concept of clean. Okay now, so this is essentially a clean brand, right? That's what it's touted as. They were founded in 2013, but they had a rebrand or a reset in 2021. So it's been two years since they did the rebrand. I'm going to fill in my brows using their brow pencils. So this is called the Blade Line. It retails for $22 and contains 0 0.006 ounce of product or 0.17. For reference, my Patrick Ta pencil contains 0.001 ounce so this contains six times 
the Patrick Ta pencil. My Benefit brow pencil has 0 0.002, so this is three times the size of this pencil. But my Give by Gwen Stefani brow pencil, this is the most def instant definition sculpting brow pencil. This has a blade shape, so this is a wider brow pencil. This contains a 0 0.01 ounce. So this pencil essentially contains more product than like a microfine brow pencil. But when compared against a blade type brow pencil, it contains equal or less product. And the price point is in line with other mid-range brands on the market. I think $22 is a decent price point and it is available in six different shades. And the great thing about this is it is refillable. So instead of having to repurchase the full pencil with the spoolie and everything, which we know is a waste, right? You go through your brow pencils, there's a spoolie that you can use as a tool, but you throw it out because the actual product is finished. So you have to buy a new one, which also has a spoolie. But with this brow pencil, instead of buying the full package all over again for that $22, you can instead buy the refill, okay, for $16, which to me is much better than any other brow pencil on the market. It reduces waste. Again, you're not throwing this spoolie side out and you can just pop in a refill for a lower cost. And it says here, ultra thin micro blade inspired this refillable brow pencil features a chiseled lead that creates hair-like strokes for more defined, fuller, natural-looking brows. Easy to use, buildable. They have warm taupe, cool taupe, auburn, cool brown, warm brown, and soft black. Like I said, the one that I picked up is cool brown, which is a really good shade for my brows. It's dark enough to match up to the actual brow color without being too dark because my brow hairs are black, right? but I don't want a black pencil. Now I wouldn't consider this to have an ultra fine blade to create hair like strokes, but I do like the shape of it because it allows me to fill in my brow hairs pretty quickly and create like a soft powder effect. And then the spoolie side, you know, works the product through. So I do like the brow pencil but it's not like a micro fine brow pencil that I'm used to, especially from like Patrick Ta or even Benefit. Their brow pencil has an ultra fine point that allows me real precision. So if you were looking for that style of pencil, this isn't it, but I feel like this pencil is easy to use. The shade is perfect, like, right? It gives a beautiful color without being too overwhelming and it is buildable. So if you wanted to kind of diffuse it through your brows to create a gradient so you have a lighter fill and then it gets darker towards the end, you can definitely do that with this pencil. But I think this brow pencil overall is fantastic and I love that it's refillable. So I will be buying the refill. I mean, $16, yeah compared to buying a full pencil over again, no. And it fills in the brows really well, like I said. The majority of my brow is filled in with that brow pencil. Now they do also have a brow gel, which I did pick up. So this is the Sculptin Brow Gel in Clear. They also have a tinted version, but I don't like tinted brow gel, so. I didn't pick it up, but if that's how you fill in your brows, people will use tinted brow gels to create like the color in their brows. I use a pencil to fill it in and then I'll use a clear brow gel if I'm even using a brow gel. So I figured this was just the best bet for me. So this retails for $25, which is kind of steep for a brow gel, I must admit, and it contains 0.3 ounce of product or 8.6 grams. Compared to the Benefit 24 hour brow setter, this contains a 0.23 ounce of product. So this contains more product. The ABH Clear Brow Gel retails for $27. I didn't even know it was that expensive. When did that happen? And it contains 0.26 ounce of product. We also have the Patrick Ta Major Brow Gel, which I really love. This is also $27 and it contains 
five milliliters or 0.17 fluid ounce. With all that in mind, this brow gel is actually not a bad price point. And it says here, the cult classic but better, formulated with advanced polymers to sculpt, gel, define, and hold hairs in place for all day wear, nourishing ingredients, support fuller, softer, healthier brows. So I'm just going to run that through my brow hairs. And the spoolie is like a mascara length but it is very thin so it is great for just fluffing through the brows and like i mentioned there are also tinted versions available on the website in the various different shades that match up to the brow blade and you can get the brow blade and a brow gel in a kit for 10 percent off so if you wanted to buy them together that would be a great option and this brow gel is pretty nice it applies well but it's not sticky or too tacky but it doesn't dry down immediately so right now it's still setting down so we'll revisit at the end of the video but I wanted to mention the packaging as well this feels so weighted because I believe this is a glass tube with a plastic cap and this is another way they're being a little bit more eco-conscious about the products so let's go back and read an excerpt from the owner and creative director Carrie Barber let's read what she says about the product while we apply some of the skincare so this is the acid phase multi AHA exfoliating solution it is a toner essentially so it says here, to me, Make has always been a brand ahead of its time. When launched in 2013, it was one of the first beauty brands to communicate in a voice that felt human, celebrating community and individuality with authentic diversity and unique expression. I believe Make paved the way for so many brands we know and love today. When I was thinking about how Make should evolve into the future, it was important to me to bring through those aspects of the original brand DNA while also creating a brand that would push us forward into the next chapter of what beauty means. For me, that means sustainability as the standard, utilizing cleaner and more effective ingredients, leaning into technology both in formulations and the digital experience and playing with pigment again. It also says that all make products are dermatologist tested, cruelty free, formulated without parabens, phthalates, petrolatum, and PEGs. They're also vegan and cruelty free. There's also a social and a charity aspect to the brand. So they partner with the Plastic Bank, which is a social enterprise that is committed to stopping ocean plastic while improving the lives of collectors in vulnerable coastal communities. So what Make tries to do is be plastic neutral, which means that for every ounce of plastic that they use in their production and for their packaging, they work with the Plastic Bank to recover and recycle the same amount of plastic that would otherwise enter the ocean and there's a note that in 2021 make will help recover 18.2 tons of plastic from our oceans equal to 1 million bottles which I love to see that these brands are being a little bit more eco-conscious even though let's be real they're not going to be a hundred percent environmentally friendly but at least they're making efforts in that arena they've also partnered with one tree planted which is a non-profit organization they donate a portion of their proceeds towards this charity work one tree planted aims to plant one tree per dollar donated towards their charity organization to restore forests and create habitats for biodiversity which will help to clean our air and our water system and since 2014 one tree planted has doubled the number of trees they plant annually across various different countries and uh, continents. So they work with North America, Latin America, Asia, Europe, Africa, and the Pacific. So they're doing a pretty good job in helping our environment. So I also like to see that aspect to this brand. 
I am just using a bit of concealer. It's my NARS Complete Matte Concealer on my lids. We're prepping it for the eyeshadows. They also work with the Trevor Project, which is an LGBT IQ organization that helps with suicide prevention and they also offer counseling for endangered youth. So that again, great to see. I love that a brand is, you know, putting their money where their mouth is and getting involved with these various charities and organizations that are trying to make a better social impact on our world. Now, I just used the toner from the line. This brand originally started with skincare products. So skincare was at their core, but since the relaunch in 2021, they've expanded into color cosmetics, which is the majority of what we will be using in this video, but I also wanted to talk about the skincare. So the exfoliating lotion that I used just now, again, is the Acid Phase AHA Exfoliating Liquid. This retails for $38, which is not a bad price point for an exfoliating toner. It contains six fluid ounce or 180 milliliters. So a nice sizable bottle. And I think, I don't know if this is glass. It feels pretty hard. It may be plastic, but it's a liquid toner that you apply to your skin day or night. So it says here, this exfoliating solution is a key step in achieving maximum skin benefits. Formulated with formaldehyde-free high-purity glycolic acid along with malic, tartaric, vegan lactic, and pyruvic acids, this multi-AHA liquid sloughs off dead skin cells to exfoliate, brighten, and perfect complexion. With skin permeation enhancers, this gentle yet effective solution provides an instant glow while leaving skin soft, smooth, and more radiant ideal for all skin types, but it is really recommended for oily and combination skin. And they'll suggest different formulations for your skin type, depending on what your needs are. So for me, I have oily skin, so I gravitated towards like the oily skin products. And this is one that they recommended. This is a chemical AHA exfoliant. You apply it after washing your face. It's going to help to unclog pores, remove any dead cells without actually having to do a physical exfoliation, which I like, you know, keep my skin nice and fresh. And I do like it. It's a liquid. It absorbs into the skin really well and it leaves this natural glow behind and you can use this day or night a few times a week you don't have to use this daily in fact if you're going to use this daily test it out on your skin to see if your skin is sensitive because again it is an aha it's not necessary to use an exfoliant daily i don't i will use it two or three times a week what i love about this formulation is that it has all those different acids in addition to having salicylic acid which my skin loves so make sure you go through the ingredients to see if your skin likes these ingredients or if you're sensitive to them if you are an ingredient junkie then you already know what works for you but if you're just getting into skincare and you're not sure go ahead and still try this i think it's a great acid exfoliator but again, don't use it daily. Probably start out with once a week and then up your consistency just to see how your skin reacts to it. And so far, all the skincare that I've used, I've really fallen in love with, including their Succulent Skin Wash. This is a serum weight cleanser. This is such an interesting face wash. So this retails for $24 and it contains 7.7 .7 fluid ounce or 230 milliliters. It's a little bit pricey for a face cleanser, but I invest in my facial cleansers because it's a step that I do daily. And it is a step that I rely on heavily to maintain the appearance of my skin. I wash my face thoroughly at night. I do a two-step cleanse where I use an oil cleanser and then a second cleanse. A lot of people don't wanna invest too much in a cleanser because it just washes down the sink. But I think a great cleanser can really improve your skin routine. So it says here, this serum weight facial cleanser is a pH balanced, sulfate free universal gel that gently cleanses the skin, effectively removing dirt, oil and impurities 
without stripping the skin of essential moisture, supercharged with amino acid and rich surfactants that preserve the skin barrier. Also formulated with prickly pear, cactus, agave, niacinamide, and sodium hyaluronate to provide nutrients developed for all skin types. And I feel like it lives up to all those claims and I really enjoy using this cleanser. It is lightweight, it is a clear gel foaming cleanser. Now when I say foaming, people get a little bit nervous. It doesn't strip your skin at all, it's not drying. I know foaming cleansers get a bad rap as being stripping and this one, let me tell you right now, it feels like, uh, <laughs> this is going to be like a weird description but it kind of feels like snail or slug slime. It's a little bit slippy like that and it foams up really well and it cleanses your skin so effectively without stripping or drying out your skin. You know that squeaky feeling that you can get from really stripping cleansers? This doesn't feel like that. But it feels like my skin is completely clean. And like I said, I use this with a first cleanse and it removes any residue off my skin and it helps also remove like any other impurities so I love this cleanser, I really, really love it. And you don't need a lot. You just pump a little bit out in your hand, foam it up, work the foam up in your hand and apply it to damp skin and work it in and it works like a dream. So I really love this cleanser and the pump clicks on and off. So you can travel with this and I will continue to repurchase it. I love to try different cleansers, but once I fall in love with one, I will be repurchasing. So I do like that one. They also have an oil cleanser that you can grab that's $28. I might try that one out next time because I am just so impressed with this specific cleanser. I also picked up a face mask from them because I wanted to sample as much of the skincare as I could. This is the Micro Crystalline Resurfacing Skin Polish. It contains 1.69 ounce of product or 48 grams and it retails for $36 so it's not cheap at all but for a microdermabrasion type scrub I'm comfortable paying that price point so it says here this face polish and treatment works to gently yet effectively slough off dead skin for a smoother more radiant looking complexion formulated with super fine micro crystalline cellulose glycolic lactic acid and fermented bio source bisabuol this exfoliating mask helps refine and resurface I really love this. It says it's safe and gentle dual action exfoliation, helps resurface and brighten, leave skin softer, smooth and glowing. That is so true. This is a super fine like micro exfoliating physical scrub. There are gritty particles in this, right? It's not a face mask that you sit with it on your skin. You can, but it's meant to slough off the dead skin cells with physical action, right? So you will apply this to damp skin and then just use circular motions to exfoliate the skin. And this is super gentle, okay? I love this and it leaves my skin feeling really smooth. You know after a good exfoliating step, your skin feels super smooth. It's really bright and glowing and it's like ready for makeup. So I absolutely love this scrub. And a little goes a long way again. You don't need a lot. So I would recommend both the cleanser and the scrub if you have oily skin. I also picked up a moisturizer. Of course I was gonna try a moisturizer. This is recommended for oily combination skin. So this is the Succulent Skin Gel Cream Gel Cream Moisturizer. Retails for $28. It contains 1.7 fluid ounce of product or 50 milliliters. This is a decent moisturizer. I think the price point May sound a little steep, but when you compare it against mid-range brands again, this is actually a decent price point for a gel cream moisturizer. It says here, this advanced serum weight moisturizer refreshes and hydrates the skin, leaving it radiant and glowing. Formulated with prickly pear and cactus extracts, rich in flavonoids to hydrate, soften, and condition skin. Enhanced with niacinamide and sodium hyaluronate, this gel cream plumps skin and brightens the look of dark spots with consistent use. Developed for all skin types especially those with oily or combination skin like I said okay it plumps it hydrates it's really comfortable it's a gel cream which is my preferred type of moisturizer so it's a very lightweight but not runny gel cream and it has this light minty tint to it that I am going to say is because of the prickly pear it may not be but 
I'm just going to assign it prickly pear color, okay? There's no scent, no fragrance, and it's very, very comfortable. It's a gel cream, so it absorbs really quickly into the skin without feeling greasy or too emollient. It just sinks into the skin really well. So if you have oily skin, I would definitely recommend you check this out. All right, now let's jump into a quick eyeshadow look. Since I don't have any eyeshadows in the line, I'm going to reach into this new palette from Too Faced. It is the Italian Spritz palette. It looks like it says Spirits, but it's Spritz, right? But that font is a little bit tricky. So here's what the palette looks like. It's one of the metal tin palettes, like the chocolate bars. And inside we have this beautiful color story. Nice and bright, tons of mattes, a few fun shimmers. This is a really approachable but fun color story. I really love it. This is inspired by Lake Como in Italy, which I have visited and it is absolutely beautiful. And it's also inspired by, of course, an Italian spritz, which is a citrus cocktail. So the eyeshadows have a light citrus fragrance. It's not overwhelming at all. It's like a sweet, light citrus fragrance. And we have some fun colors, like I said. We have some orangey tones, some summer shades. So we're gonna dive right into this and do a quick look let's start out with the shade lake and bake which is a light beigey tan and this shade won't show up very intensely because it matches my skin tone almost exactly but it's gonna help with blending in the crease then i'm gonna grab this orangey mustard shade called capri fun that's a really fun name for an eyeshadow let's see how intense that color is Oh, that is, that is nice. It's not too overwhelming, so you can build it up. And because it's more of a muted mustard, it's not gonna give you this shocking pop of yellow. And you can use it then as a transition shade in the crease to warm up that area. Next, let's grab Feeling Saucy, which is the deeper brick orange. This is more like an orangey brown rather than a true orange in the pan, but applying it, it's reading a little bit more bright orange, but it's more on the muted side. So it's not, again, going to be that bright sunshine orange. And I think that will make this color a little bit more approachable. That is pretty. These colors are picking up really well and they're blending really well. So I'm really impressed by those two shades so far. I feel like I wanna do the most, so I'm gonna grab the matte pink as well, which is When in Rome. Let's use a smaller brush and I'm just going to pop that on the center of the crease, just for that pop of color. I'm not bringing it too far onto the inner tear duct. I just want that pink to pop and it is a fun pink that is really nice actually now i'm going to grab the shade mama mia which is that deep reddish brown now that i look at it closely it's not a brown at all it's more like a deep burgundy purple like a wine shade rather than a brown and i'm just gonna pop that on the outer v to create some dimension this is not really a rich deep shade but it is one of the deepest shades in the palette. So if you're looking for more depth, you're probably gonna have to pull in another eyeshadow rather than rely on this palette. But if you have lighter skin tone, this might be sufficiently dark for you. For me, I would prefer to have a deeper, richer shade, but I'm going to blend that color out with the rest of the shades that we have in the crease just to make sure we have a good diffused look. Now I have these four shimmers that I'm thinking about. This one is Ciao Bellini, this one is Sin Sin, and this one is Take Me to Church. And I'm thinking, mm, I don't know where to go with it. Here they are swatched out, and I'm thinking, I'm gonna start with this shade. That is the shade Sin Sin, which is a medium bronze. And I'm using a worker brush from Sonia G for that. I'm gonna pop that on the outer part of the lid. This shade is like a thicker metallic. So using a stiff brush to apply it will be better, or you can use your finger 
but I just want a nice pop of color. Then I'll go into Take Me to Church. This one is more of a almost like rose gold shade. And I like these types of eyeshadows because they're not flaky. They have more like a silicone texture, which makes them a little bit more difficult to pick up in the pan. So you kind of have to rough up the eyeshadow, but they lay down on the lid smoothly. Let me try to apply that with my finger and see how it goes. Yeah, it will definitely pick up better on your finger. So if you're the type of person that applies eyeshadow with your finger, go for it. It's not my preferred method, but for some of these eyeshadow formulas, it is just the best approach to lay it down smoothly because the eyeshadows have that creamier, kind of really moist texture to them. And that's exactly how I would describe them. They're moist, like they're very dense. You can definitely feel that dimethicone texture to them. Other eyeshadows will use like a mineral oil to create that really slick feel. And again, fingers just work better with these eyeshadows or using a damp brush. And that actually looks really pretty. Doesn't it look like a sorbet? Oh my God, that is so nice. I really like that. The only thing I feel like I'm missing right now is a deep shade in the outer V. So I'm actually going to grab one of my palettes. This is my Odin's Eye Hummingbird palette. I know summer is upon us, so I'm gonna grab one of my shades, which is Star Applets, the deep dark purple. I feel like a purple is what is gonna bring this together rather than a brown. So that's why I'm pulling out Star Apple. And I created that shade for this exact purpose. When you have a colorful look, like a sunset, it doesn't make sense to add like a black or a dark brown. It's just gonna look better with a dark colorful shade. And a purple is the perfect fit or like a dark red. So, boom, my palette comes out in the nick of time and we'll just build that up because again, there's no deep dark shade in the palette. And for me, I need a deep rich shade to create dimension. That's how I like to do my looks. I always have like a dark outer V because that's just my thing. That's my vibe. That's how I create looks on my lids. But these shimmers, I mean, stunning. They have this duochrome look to them that is really, really appealing. And that pink shade, oh my God, take me to church. It's like a golden pink, you know, like a rose gold. It is really, really stunning. And then on the inner tear duct, I feel like, ooh, I'm gonna use the signature shade, which is Lake Como, that blue, ooh yeah. And the texture of the shade is a little smoother, a little bit lighter than the other shadows we've used so far that had that slick kind of dense feel to them. This is more of a light, almost baked shadow feel. It's not a baked shadow, it's just more finely milled. Oh, that's such a pretty blue, but I feel like it may be too deep. So should we try spritz and glitz? What's a little me on top gonna hurt, you know? Maybe a little. <laughs> Pain is pleasure. Y'all know that song. Don't act like y'all know that song. So this color is a little bit, again, deeper than I expected. Hmm. So let's go in with the vanilla shade Gelat. Oh, yes. And we'll pop that on the inner tear duct. And it will kind of brighten and lift that purple blue mixture to make it a little bit brighter. Yeah. We like that. Take me to church now. Mm, 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 mm. You know what? For the brow highlight, let's use Holy Cannoli. That is like a light peach pink that is gonna lift my brow, but still give a little bit of like a pink hue. So it blends in really well with the rest of the look. This is really pretty, guys. This is so bright and kind of spring-themed. 
Let's clean this up and carry on with the complexion products now from Make Beauty. All right, so let's go ahead and grab the Diffusion Dew. I was very nervous about this product, guys, I'm not gonna lie, but this is their Radiant Skin Tint. It retails for $32, which sounds a little bit pricey for a skin tint, but it's in line again with other mid-range brands on the market. So it says here, this next generation skin tint features skin mimicking pigments that add radiant coverage while blurring, smoothing, and brightening. Share yet buildable, this lightweight product is formulated with added niacinamide and adenosine to enhance skin for a glowing, healthy looking complexion. It is available in 12 shades, which is not saying a lot, right? It has lightweight coverage and it's not touting itself as a medium or full coverage foundation so a single shade is going to cover a range of skin depths and I think they did a decent job with just 12 shades for covering a wide range of skin tones they have four dark and deep shades a couple of light shades medium and tan shades but they don't go really really light so if you have a really pale complexion you may not find a shade here and if you have a really deep skin tone you may not be able to find your skin tone match either I was able to find a pretty decent shade match I grabbed shade 12 which is called suede so there are four different shades after me so I don't even start out the deep shades so I think depending on your complexion and your undertones you may be able to to find a shade but it's not really expensive but just keep in mind that it's lightweight coverage so you don't have to get an exact skin tone match the fact is it might match your skin even though you think it might be a little bit too dark or a little bit too light so just bear that in mind this comes in a glass bottle packaging it's really slim and it has a pump of course it's a plastic cap but I love that it's in a glass bottle the shade name and size and information is on the bottom in a black label. This is really simple, basic packaging. It doesn't feel like extra luxurious or anything, but it doesn't feel cheap, you know? So it's functional as far as I'm concerned. So the benefits of this foundation, it says it blends seamlessly into the skin to perfect. Share buildable coverage, again, share coverage. Don't even expect a lot. Adds a luminous glow to the complexion and it is infused with skincare ingredients to improve the overall look of skin. Which makes sense because they were skincare focused initially so when they added this diffusion dew it made sense to add like skincare ingredients. So they have the adenosine which helps to decrease the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles by energizing the skin. It helps improve overall skin smoothness for visibly more youthful looking skin. Adenosine is actually a medical ingredient, okay? This is commonly used to bring your heart back to a normal rhythm. I know, so how does this work for skincare? I don't know, okay? It says it's a building block of RNA and is essential for all life. I don't know, okay, I don't know, don't ask me things, I can't, I can't tell you. It also has niacinamide, right? So it says, high purity, non-flushing niacinamide helps combat the look of dark spots while decongesting pores and balancing excess sebum production. I need that, okay, I need this. It doesn't say it's for a specific skin type. I have oily skin and diffusion do, I'm telling you right now, I was scared out of my mind because I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> What do you mean diffusion do? I don't want any do on my skin. But here we are, we're gonna try this out. I've already tried this out, so I know it's a great skin match. You ready? Look at this, Suede 12. Do you know those ads on Instagram or Twitter from Il Maquillage where they do the swipe and it just blends into the skin and they're like, oh my God, find your perfect match. I did not expect to find my perfect match from this product. 12 shades, it's just like, what is going on? But this shade looks initially light, but once I blend it in, it just merges with my skin. And it really does feel like a skin tint. It feels like skincare with some pigments in it to give it a complexion enhancing glow. So, you know, it is what it is. I don't expect high coverage from it. I just expect it to look dewy because the fusion dew which again is not my thing I'm not interested in being dewy but here we are you'll see 
it just kind of coats my skin in this radiant tint. It's not really given coverage per se, but it is evening out my skin a bit. It is not blanking out my skin though. So if you want more coverage, I would recommend mixing this with a fuller coverage foundation. I've actually done that with my Gucci matte foundation and it worked really well, okay? It made that foundation glide a little bit better, even though that foundation on its own glides well, but it gave it more of a natural finish and I like that I added some skincare benefits to that foundation. So you can mix it in with a more matte foundation, right? Or you can just use it on its own and add some coverage with a concealer where you need that added coverage. But yeah, you're just gonna get a skincare tint from this product. You'll see I'm very glowy, okay? I just look dewy. This is not a foundation that I would pick right out the gate for myself. It looks like shimmer on my skin actually. Some of that glow that you're seeing is not from like skincare. It is actually like sparkles of mica on my skin. So it's not doing me any favors as far as blurring and smoothing and diffusing any pores. I look very glowy and I'm wondering, hold on, I'm almost questioning if that brush had glitter in it because that looks a little bit more shimmery than I wanted it to be. Yeah, no. Mm -mm. Let's look at the ingredients again. There it is, synthetic flora flogopite, mica is in this ingredient. It's lower down in the ingredient list to be fair, okay? You know, those skincare ingredients that they mentioned are higher up, but it does definitely have mica in it. So, hmm, there are no silicones though, so it's not silicone based, there are no oils, but it definitely has that mica, which is going to make me a little bit more shiny. I'm not loving this, and I could have told you that from the jump. I don't love this on its own, but I like mixing it with other complexion products because it gives this added little bit of glow without being overwhelming. So I'm using this almost the same way someone would use the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter, which is a multi-purpose product that you can use as a primer or as a mix-in with your complexion products, or you can use it as a spot highlighter to create that glow on your skin. We also have the Seamless Skin Elevated Glow from Lisa Eldridge, as well as the Auric Glow Lust, which is another like filtered glow product that enhances the glow to your skin. I would use it in that way rather than using it on its own because this is not gonna cut it for me. No, 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 especially given how glowy it looks without doing anything else. So, not my favorite product from the line, but I kind of anticipated this just based on the description and seeing dry skin lovelies enjoy it. So if you have dry skin and you prefer like a glowy product, this might be right up your alley because child, it's definitely gonna give you the glow. And if you love niacinamide in your skincare, this might be perfect for you. So now that we have all this going on, let's go in with the concealer. So this is the Skin Mimetic Concealer. It is available in 20 shades, which I found curious that the concealer has more shades than the foundation, but who am I, right? This retails for $28. A little bit steep, okay, but again, in line with other mid-range brands on the market. I'm not gonna keep repeating that, all right? $28, so you have to be comfortable paying that for your concealer. It contains 0.26 ounce of product or 7.5 grams. Let's see, compared to the Fenty Pro Filter Concealer, this contains 0.27 fluid ounce. So relatively the same sizing as this from Make Beauty, and the Fenty Concealer retails for $30. My Best Skin Ever from Sephora contains 0.3 fluid ounce, and it retails for $15. So obviously, there are cheaper options on the market, but like Kosas is $30, NARS is $32, Makeup Forever is $30, Dior is $29, 
Rare Beauty is cheaper at $22. Amico Lay is $24. So again, the price point is kind of in line with other mid-range brands on the market. It even lands closer to the cheaper side of the price range. So it says here, this concealer provides buildable medium coverage with a radiant finish. Again, ooh, child, when I read that, I was like, no, not me. Formulated with skin mimicking pigments, hence the mimetic name, red algae and adenosine that was also in the skin tint. It blends seamlessly into the skin to conceal and correct while hydrating. Ideal for spot coverage or layering over foundation can also be used as a highlighter or a contour, which that just feeds into how people use concealers. That was never the intent of concealer, but people use it to conceal, highlight, and contour, okay? They just pick different shades depending on their intent. I personally pick a shade that's closest to my complexion because what am I doing otherwise? I got the shade 10 medium 10 N. So these have different undertones. We have cool, warm, and neutral. So 10 is medium tan neutral. And that to me described my complexion a lot better than any of the other shades. 11 tan O has olive undertone. So maybe that would also be a good match for me. But I picked up 10 because I wanted it to be a little bit brightening as well because this concealer is going to go under my eyes. And you'll see 10 is actually a pretty good match and it's neutral, which is what I prefer. I didn't want to go olive because I was nervous that the olive might be a little bit too gray leaning for me. It might just give this cast to my skin that I didn't want. So I figured neutral would be a better option. The applicator is one of those arrowhead applicators, it has a slight angle. It's very soft and comfortable to apply under the eyes. And the consistency is a little bit more on the thin side, so it glides on really well. With a concealer such as this, I would let it sit on my skin for a couple minutes so it can absorb a little bit of the moisture. That will help with a little bit of the pigmentation and coverage. I'll apply a little bit of this around my mouth as well where I need some added coverage and let me put a little bit in my forehead area. I'm going to let this sit on my skin for a little bit, then we'll come back and blend it out. All right, it's had a few minutes to sit on my skin. I'm just going to blend it out with a silicone sponge. This is a great sponge to use for blending out complexion products because it has silicone infused in it so it doesn't absorb as much of the product, which we don't want, right? We want the added coverage. So I'm just going to pound it all over my skin and it did definitely add some coverage where we know that diffusion do didn't do okay pun intended and I will just use a small brush from Chanel to blend out under my eyes now this concealer very lightweight okay very thin not a ton of coverage it's going to be very dewy now, if you go for a dewy look, if you have dry skin, I think this is going to be perfect for you. But if you're expecting coverage, it's not going to do that. But you can mix it in with like a more heavyweight concealer to give you a little bit more coverage. I personally would want more coverage and I wouldn't want this dew. Like guys, I look so dewy right now. <laughs> oh my god. So you see the coverage? Very light. Nothing heavy duty. So I'm just, I have to, okay, this is, this is too dewy. I'm using my Sephora Collection Concealer. This is a more full coverage concealer and it has more of a matte finish. This concealer has a different finish. It is not as dewy, but you can kind of mix the two to create a beautiful balance. So I don't mind having this concealer. I just wouldn't necessarily get it again or even recommend it to you if you're looking for fuller coverage or you don't like glowy concealers. But if you wanted a glowy one, I like it. It's cute, right? It blends out nicely, decent enough little coverage. It's fine. Now let's move on to another glowy product before I get to the powders because whew, we have to do all the do right now. So we have the Heat Stroke Dewy Gel Skin Tint. This retails for 
Okay, contains 0.17 ounce of product or five grams. There are eight shades to choose from and they have really fun colors. It says this innovative gel tint is formulated with skin enhancing pigments to create a dewy watercolor blush effect. Skin plumping brown algae enhances for volume and radiance. This is perfect if you have dry skin. For me, is not what I need, okay? It has a dewy finish. It has buildable, ultra blendable coverage. It hydrates, plumps, replenishes moisture. <sighs> it is a twist up tube and I got the shade Inflamed, which is a coral orange. Now with everything that I just described, you know this product is not for me, but for the sake of science, we're going to apply it to my cheek area. It is a beautiful dewy cream blush and it looks gorgeous on the skin. So if you like a natural flush of the skin and you have more normal or dry skin, this may be right up your alley because it's stunning, right? There are various colors to choose from, but you see how dewy that is? Y'all, does no one feel sorry for me right now with all this dew? Look at me, don't I look sad like... <laughs> I know, so let's go ahead and powder. So the powder in the line is called the Diffusion Set Translucent Press Powder. It retails for $32, a little bit steep, but again, in line with other mid-range brands. Take a shot every time I say that, but be careful, because you might just end up in the hospital. It contains 0.26 ounce or 7.5 grams. This ultra soft refillable translucent setting powder is formulated with microsphere powders and a mineral complex that sets foundation and concealer while absorbing excess oil for a smoother looking complexion. Biotech derived algae helps balance the complexion Apply to any areas you want to mattify or all over, which is... <sighs> What I need, child, so this is available in five different shades, and like they mentioned, it's translucent. So it's not going to be heavy coverage. This is gonna be like a mattifying powder with a very slight tint. I went ahead and picked up two of the shades because they are refillable. So I grabbed the shade Medium Deep, which is a richer, darker shade. This one ended up being a little bit too rich on my complexion, so I went ahead and grabbed translucent tan which is a lighter shade and you're able to pick these up in the full compact which is beautiful it's a plastic magnetic compact with silver and gold packaging i love this play on metal colors this is stunning i love the compact it's simple it's sleek and they just have the make beauty logo and then a label with the product information and the compact has a mirror and then the pans are removable so they are magnetized and they pop right out. It's easy to pop them out. You just pull it from the top. There you go. And you can pop in a refill. And the refills retail for $20. So if you just wanted to try out the powder without the commitment of the compact, grab it in a refill. But I am glad to have the compact so I can swap the shades around. So like I mentioned, I grabbed medium deep and medium tan so we're going to use the tan shade because medium deep was just a little bit too deep and i'm just going to pick the powder up on a fluffy brush from bk beauty and press it over my skin matte instantly do you see this glowy as hell looking very sad and unhappy matte flawless beautiful and this powder when they say it has skin mimicking pigments. I mean, it looks like my skin. It doesn't look like heavy powder. It's setting everything down. It looks amazing. Like, look at that. It looks smooth. Like, look, right? Which is why I was like, not to fair, we're going to powder this down so I can end up looking very greasy and shiny with their Diffusion Dew concealer and, and mm, skin tint. We're going to mattify her, so don't worry about me. Don't cry for me, Argentina, okay? We're going to set her down. You can also apply the powder with a powder puff. And this powder picks up really well. It is a little bit more loosely pressed though, so you can kick up a ton of powder, so just be careful. But it feels so silky 
and finely milled. Oh my god, it's so good. I love this powder. I'm just pressing this in with a Beauty Blender powder puff. This is such a nice little puff. Now you can see this color, that medium shade is a little bit light, right? So I'm gonna go in with the medium deep and just quickly buff over my skin just to add a little bit more color. You don't need to do this, I'm just doing it because I have the two shades. So there you have it, right? Blotted, smooth, I look really blurred and beautiful. It's a nice powder, I'll give it that for sure. It's a beautiful powder that sets the skin down really well and it looks flawless without looking cakey or heavy. So I really do like the powder. Next we have the bronzer. This is the Skin Mimetic Micro Suede Bronzer, which is gorgeous. I mean, look at the packaging. This is available in six shades. It retails for $32, similar to the powder, and it contains the same 0.26 ounce of product or 7.57 grams. It says this refillable micro suede matte bronzer adds buildable warmth and definition for a naturally sun-kissed tan effect. Formulated with active multifunctional sensory powders infused with hydrating hyaluronic acid and replenishing ceramides, this bronzer feels lightweight and silky smooth. And I will say that is a fact. This powder is so smooth. It does feel like a suede product. But here's the thing that I found, okay? If you're using a brush that comes in contact with something damp like skincare or your foundation, and then you dip it into the powder, you can create a little bit of a film, which is usual for any powder, but I just wanted to mention it because it happened to me and I got a little bit of a film. But you just slough that right off. It will buff off really easily, but I just wanted to bring that up. I picked up two shades of this bronzer. The shades I picked up are Dune, which is like a tan shade, and Equinox. These shades are right next to each other in the selection, and I feel like these are not my best shades, okay? The Equinox shade is a little bit more red, a little bit more orange, not my go-to. The Dune shade is more in line with my undertone. This is what I would go for in a bronzer. Let's grab my 101 brush from BK Beauty. This is the travel size and you'll see the powder picked up. It is not heavy duty, okay? It's going to give a little bit of a tint, okay? So if you were a little bit lighter than me or you prefer a very light bronzer, which I do sometimes, right? You see the difference. It creates a little bit of shadowing. This is a great color for you, but if you were looking for more impact, you're not gonna find it here, but I feel like this bronzer is more like a bronzer for me because of the undertone. It gives me a little shadowing. So you see that, nothing on this side, and then slight shadowing on this side. So it's very, very natural. So I do like that I have this shade because it can give a very natural look to my skin, but you would have to use a denser brush to pick up and build up the product, right? But if you have medium complexion, I think this would be a beautiful shade if you have more neutral undertones. Stunning shade, right? Bronzer, no bronzer. You see the difference a little bronzer can make? And it's not really rich or deep. So a little hint of color is fine. And I do like this for my more natural days. Then the Equinox shade, which has like more red to it, you can see, you see that? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. It can create a little bit of hard pan, but it's not really hard pan. It's just like a little, a little coating on the surface of your powder. Now this color, Equinox, is a little bit more orange. You see the difference? Orange, neutral. You see the difference, right? And I don't mind this color as much, and it's a little bit richer, but it's definitely a bronzer versus like a bronzer shade, which I don't mind because I'll use my bronzer to contour. It's not a big deal, but you can see it's more on the warm side. And this one I prefer to use just because it looks a little bit more healthy. I don't know. It gives my complexion this healthy look versus like, hey, shadowing, you know, 
and let's just apply it a little bit across the bridge of my nose you know just to lighten that up a little bit and this shade is perfect for that sun-kissed look again because it has more of that warm look to it right it's pretty so I love these bronzers they're smooth they look great I just think the shade selection might be a little bit difficult to navigate but if you use me as reference I have Dune again more neutral and then Equinox is a little bit on the warm side it's not too red though, not too orange, but it definitely is going to be like a bronzer shade. So I love the Equinox shade and even though it may look intimidating in the compact, it's actually really nice on my skin. And can we talk about the compact? Like look at the blue. This is stunning and I love that they use different compacts for the powder so you can tell the difference. So the blue is the bronzer and it's eye-catching, it stands out. Again, you can get the refills for these bronzers for $20. So if you didn't want to invest in the compact for the 32 and you have a magnetic palette, you can just pop it in for $20. Or if you wanted multiple shades and you just wanted one compact so you can swap it in and out, go ahead and grab that in a refill and in a compact. Now let's move on to the blushes which are stunning. So these are the Skin Mimetic Micro Suede Blushes. They're available in 10 shades. These retail for $28. Again, a little bit steep. They contain 0.1 ounce of product or 2.83 grams, a little bit pricey, but again, they are refillable and you can get a refill for $18. Here is the beautiful compact, oh my god. Even though they're not weighted or ultra luxurious, I still love the packaging. It's sleek and modern looking with these pops of colors. I mean, come on then, the mix of metal with a pop of color. Stop it, oh my god. So I picked up five shades of these. Scratch that, I actually picked up six shades. Yes, okay, listen, Linda. I initially bought three of the compacts because I'm like, oh, three out of ten, this is going to be like a great selection of shades. But then once I got them and I tested them out, I was like, hold up, hold up, wait a minute. Okay, wait a minute, what is this formula? Why is it so amazing? So I went ahead and grabbed three more shades. So the lightest shade I picked up is New Moon, which actually doesn't look like it's gonna be that light on the website. This is like a muted, dusty, mauve rose shade. It is not intensely pigmented, but it would work great for just a flush of color, nothing too impactful. I think this is better for medium skin, but I can still get use out of it if I want a very natural looking blush. Then I have Amber Glow. This one is more of a muted apricot color. So it's peachy, but it's more subdued and a little bit more on the dull side but it's really stunning. And again, medium skin tones will love this shade, but on me, it's gonna give more of a natural flush of skin. I also picked up this shade Celestial Rose. Now this one again looks deeper on the website than in actuality. It's like a dusty rose tan shade. It's more on the cool tone side. It's very light. It's not going to give me a lot of color at all. It's the one with the least impact for me. This barely shows up on my skin, but it's still like a really beautiful color. Then of course, we're getting into the fun shades. I picked up Vivid Dream. This is like a vivid coral shade. It has a little mix of pink and orange. Really stunning. I love shades like this on my complexion. I, oh my God, they're so beautiful. And then I have the bright, pink shade which is fuchsia flush this is a vivid bold pink shade but it's a shade that you can share out or build up and i really love it it's a cool tone fuchsia pink it's stunning i absolutely love it and then the final shade that i picked up is crimson sky it is more like a rosy cranberry rather than like a true red it is more on the cool tone side and i really love this shade as well this will look stunning on deep red skin. For me, I have to be a little bit more careful on how I apply it and be a little bit more light-handed, but it's a stunning shade. And what I love about these powders is that they feel so lightweight on the skin. They build and blend beautifully. So even though the shades might look bold and intense, they don't apply that way. You can share them out a bit and get more of a light flush of color. Now I'm going to try to apply each of these shades so you can see what they look like on my cheeks. So let's start out with a new moon, which is the more muted pinky mauve shade. And this shade, again, you can build it up 
but look how easily they blend out like Come on, these are so easy. Again, this color is gonna be like a natural flush on my skin. So you see how this can be an everyday blush for you? If you're into these mauve tones, right? It's really pretty, but again, very subtle. It's gonna be more on the cool tone mauve side. So if this is too neutral for you, just stay away. Let me show you what Celestial Rose looks like. This one is the really, really light shade that really does nothing on my skin. You see just a little color, right? Again, that's why I'm saying these shades can be built up and this is gonna be more of a natural blush, a very natural. Okay, here's a little color but it doesn't look like something orange or red, right? It's just hairs, a pop of color, a little flush, just gives a little bit of dimension and shade into the cheek, but nothing crazy. So again, Celestial Rose, New Moon. New Moon is a little bit more intense, right? But Celestial Rose is more muted, more on the nude side. Very natural though, and I do like having blushes like this in my arsenal because I can use them for that very natural look. And if you're afraid of blush and you're my complexion, that might be a shade that you wanna check out, right? Just ease yourself into blush. All right, let's try out Amber Glow, which is moving into the more amber apricot colors. This one is gonna be also very subtle, but look at the color, right? A little bit more intense. You can build it up. You see how I'm building it up? but it blends out so easily. And that suede technology that they mention is so on point because it looks seamless on this. Like, look, it just looks seamless, but it looks like color and it's really beautiful. If I could recommend any color for a natural color, it would be this one, okay? You can build it up if you need to, but you can also share it out for that natural flush. You see what I mean? So really love that shade. I didn't get that. Could you try again? No, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> now let's go in with Vivid Dream, which is the other orangey blush. Now, this one is, of course, more on the coral side, which means it has a little red to it. It's gonna be a little bit bold, okay? Vivid Dream, which is true. It is vivid, it is beautiful, but look how it shares out. Right? It's so pretty, guys. These are the products that I fell in love with. The powder products are on point. Obviously, I'm not gonna fall in love with the diffusion dew. Like, I don't wanna be a dewy child. But the powders, mama. What? What? Okay, like, are we talking? Are we talking? Stunning. So here's a more subtle option, right? Hmm, cute, amber glow. And here's your more vivid option, right? <laughs> love it, love, love, love both of them. These are the more orangey blushes, all right? So now let's go in with the really punchy colors. First up, we have Fuchsia Flush. Scary looking, right? But it's not as scary as it looks in the pan. You can blend it out. It's gonna be more pink. It's gonna be more on the fuchsia side, right? There's a little hint of purple which is what fuchsia is, it's like a purple pink, right? A blue base pink. Intense, right? You're like, oh my God, Tina, you look crazy. Blend that out, blend it out. Do some circular motions and blend her out, okay? And look how smooth that is. All right, it looks a little crazy. Looks a little crazy. I've applied way too much blush, but you can go over it with a powder brush and boom, fade it out nicely but it's a great pink, right? Nicely pigmented. So pick up a little bit and just lightly go over it. It's a more intense blue-based pink. Pretty color, not necessarily my vibe, right? You know, blue-based is not for me. And then we have Crimson Sky, the richest shade I picked up. Picks up really intensely, all right? So you wanna go in lightly. And you see how intense that color is? Let's fade that out now. <laughs> Looks a little bit bruisey, but we're gonna buff her out. You see, circular motions. And look how beautiful and airbrushed it looks. Stop, now I've layered on like a bunch of product on my face, but don't mind that, just look at right here. 
pretty color, right? So the more pink, cool tone pink, fuchsia, and then the more red shade, stunning, right? These shades, like I said, build up really nicely on the skin. Let's finish up with the final few products. We have a mascara and an eyeliner. So here is the Lash Prototype Volumizing Mascara. It retails for $26. We don't love to pay that price for mascara, but lo and behold, that's kind of the price we pay for mid-range mascaras. Take a shot. This contains a 0.32 ounce of product or 9.1 grams. This is a single black shade and it's a natural fiber bristle brush. It says lash defining mascara that adds volume, length, and definition. Formulated with a vegan beeswax alternative, Antilia Tomentosa Bud Extract. What is that? This mascara adds buildable volume for optimal fullness. Okay, let's go ahead and apply this. The wand is very comfortable. It's not spiky, it doesn't hurt. So I can go right against my lash line without, you know, poking myself in the eye. And I'm just wiggling the mascara wand through the lashes. Now the formulation is very, it's still a new mascara, so it's kind of still wet. So all I do is wipe off the excess off the wand and it's a very slim wand. I wonder, is this the same type of wand they used for, hmm, hmm. Is it the same wand as the brow gel? It looks like it's the same wand, guys. It looks very identical. Is that just me? It might be an identical wand, all right? So it's the typical length of a mascara wand, but the bristles are short, so it's a little bit more controlled. And I am just building up the layers so we get a nice even coat. Okay, I can tell you right now, because it's a damper formula, my lashes are clumping together a little bit more than I would like them to, but I am definitely getting volume and a little bit of length, okay? Nothing crazy, but I don't have struggle lashes, so I don't know if I'm the best person to test the mascara for you. I can tell you if a mascara sucks right away. But when a mascara gives me great results, I can't really say it's gonna do the same for you because again, I have decent lashes. My lashes are not over here struggling, child. But it does kind of clump the lashes a little bit. I don't mind that as much. It doesn't say it separates. It just says it adds volume, which is fine. It's cute, but I would go in with a lash comb to separate my lashes, which is what I'll do in a bit but I wait for the mascara formula to dry a little bit. It works great on the lower lashes because it is a thinner brush. So again, it's easier to control and it definitely adds volume to those lower lashes. Length, I don't know that it adds much length, which I guess just adding the darkness to my lashes makes them look longer, but it definitely adds fullness and it's a rich black. So, really beautiful and it's a soft formula so my lashes are not crunchy I'm just using my Tweezerman lash comb to separate the lashes so you see just by combing through I get a little bit more separation and you can now see the volume in the lashes that's nice I actually do like the mascara and it feels I don't know it feels comfortable for some reason like it feels conditioning because it's a soft formula. It's not dry, which I usually prefer a dry formula, but now that I use this one, I'm like, maybe I like a moist formula, <laughs> right? But that's a nice mascara, so if you wanted to try the mascara, I don't think it would be a bad buy. There are other mascara, well, should I say there are other mascaras I prefer? Yes, I prefer the Amico Lay mascara, to be honest, and this is way cheaper. So I would go with Amico Le, but this is not a bad mascara. It's really nice. They also have a waterproof gel eyeliner. I picked this up for good measure. So this is the Continuum Waterproof Gel Liner. It retails for $23, which is why I didn't want to pick it up. I have other eyeliners that I love, 
but I'm gonna try it out, right? It contains 0.16 ounce of product or 0.45 grams. It says this creamy, highly pigmented pencil highlights eyes for precision or play that lasts all day. Rich emollients give this pencil a silky glide on for easy blendable application that sets to a smudge free waterproof finish. It's available in 12 shades and it comes with a built in sharpener and blending brush. So on one end, you have a little smudger brush it's just a flat synthetic brush that you can use to smudge your lash line and then you can pop that black piece off and it will be your sharpener because this is a twist up pencil so you can use the sharpener to create a sharp point to the pencil but i don't need to do that because mine is fresh the shade i picked up is emerald and we're gonna just apply that to my waterline which is how i like to test a liner if it glides on my waterline and stays i can give it a sign of approval but if it fades away then i'm like no you're not waterproof this is gliding on really well it's not tugging and that is a beautiful oh that is a pretty color that is stunning y'all i have a must oh child a little mascara smudge was on my eyeball. Woo! Now I let the first layer dry, so I'm gonna see if it can build up on my waterline, which it does. It layers up, and you can get a little bit more pigmentation there. That is a pretty color. Let's see how it smudges. I'm just gonna apply a little bit on the lower lash line and use their little smudger brush to smudge it out a little bit. I guess it sets really fast though so it's not the most smudgeable I would say you would have to move really really fast but it glides really easily Eh, no I actually don't like how it smudges at all I would just use it as a waterline liner but it's not something that I would say run out and get it's not the most impressive now let's test the brows okay the brows are definitely in place that gel has set down it's not crunchy though or flaky. So brow gel, great. Last product, I know we're still going. Can you imagine? The last thing I have is their serum balm and I ended up getting this as a gift with purchase. So this serum balm actually pops up under their list of skincare rather than under their makeup products. But there is an intense version of this that has color to it that is under their makeup listing. So this one is a hydrating lip treatment. It retails for $26. That is a lot, okay, and it contains 0.15 ounce of product or 4.3 grams. This is a sample size, so this is actually a mini size. This is a 0.07 ounce or 2 grams, so less than half the size. And there are five different shades to choose from. I got the shade Nude Nova, which is just a nudie shade, which is perfect for me, right? Let's see what it says. This serum lip product provides instant hydration while softening, smoothing, and plumping. Formulated with a natural lip volumizing ingredient derived from biomolecules extracted from pomegranate flowers along with liquefied jojoba wax, this lip conditioning treatment adds luxurious long-lasting shine and cushion. Okay now, so it's supposed to be plumping. Ah, it doesn't sting at all. I don't feel anything, but it's very cushiony. Mm-hmm. Oh, there you go. I feel the tingle now. There's just a little bit of tingling. So this is supposed to plump and hydrate. It's cute, you know, no real color to it. Mm. I could do without this thing. I could do without it. But if you wanted to try it out, I mean, go ahead, <laughs> like, are you gonna be losing out if you try it out? Mm -mm. I don't think so. Okay, I feel it. I feel it. Ooh. Mm. And I will say the foundation is holding up considering that it is dewy and I have been filming for well over an hour now trying out all these products and I still look matte. So this powder, okay, if you're looking for a mattifying powder, Yes, ma'am, it is really giving it to me. Let me go ahead and do a change of outfit, all right? 
let me pop on something cute to put together with this look and I'll be right back to finish up with my final thoughts about all these products. Alright, so I am back and I am ready to wrap up with my final thoughts on all the products that we used in this video and make beauty as a brand. I'll start out with something that has nothing to really do with the video, but we used it anyway. This is the new Too Faced Italian Spritz Palette. I really like the look that we created from this palette. Like, it's really cute. Now, I did have to add a deepening shade. But the other shades in the palette performed really well, and I do like the shimmers. I like that the shimmers aren't the chunky, sparkly shades that so many brands are doing these days. These are like true creamy shimmers. They're better applied with the fingers, and two of the shades, which is the light purple and then the light blue, have a different formulation from the rest of the shimmers that are more emollient. They're more dimethicone rich, these two shades are more of a sheer wash of color and they're beautiful but they're just a little bit different overall i really love the mattes right again there's no true rich dark shade but i think you'll be able to create some really beautiful warm tone looks from this palette and the shimmers are gorgeous i even popped this dark blue which is lake and bake the shimmery blue on the lower lash line just a little bit right there and it's stunning so overall I do like this palette. The price point though, very expensive for no reason, but I got it with my Ulta points, so I actually didn't pay for it at all. All right, let's jump into Make Beauty as a brand. Starting out with the skincare, all right. Skincare is kind of at the core of the brand. These are the products that they originally launched with and then they ventured into makeup. And I think they did a really good job with the skincare. My favorite would be the face wash. I love how comfortable and moisturizing this face wash is while still being very effective at cleansing my skin. I love the texture of it. I love how it foams up and it rinses really clean. I do use it as a second cleanse though. I go in with an oil cleanser before anything else. And I love that it's in a pump packaging rather than like a squeeze packaging. I prefer my face washes in a pump. So much so that I considered picking up a second one of this so I could have one in my shower and then one in my sink where I wash my face in the morning. But I decided against that. I'm like, use your other face washes, girl. If you run out of this, then you can get another one. But yeah, I really love the face wash. I also love the exfoliating mask. This is a great, really gentle micro exfoliant for when you want to do a physical scrub to get rid of dead skin cells. Maybe you have some peeling and you're like, you know what, I need to get in there and scrub it away. It's really gentle and I love it. I absolutely love it. And you can purchase this in a refill so you don't have to keep repurchasing the full packaging. So when I run out of this, I will also be picking up a refill. And then their gel cream moisturizer is also pretty nice. It's lightweight. If you have oily combination skin and you're just looking for an everyday lightweight moisturizer, this is a nice one to pick up and I love that it also has a pump packaging. It makes it really convenient. So I wouldn't necessarily run out and repurchase this once I've used it up, but I will say that the delivery mechanism also plays into how much I like a product. So if a product is comparable to others in my collection that I love, but it's just easier to use because it's in a pump packaging like this one, rather than in a little jar, then I may actually gravitate to picking this one up and it's easy to travel with. So we'll see how it pans out. But for right now, I like it, but I'm not like in love with it because I love my other gel creams equally. But the price point of this also plays in. So we'll see how I feel about this, but it's a good one in case you wanted to check it out. The toner is a nice one if you wanted a toner. A toner is not necessarily one of my key skincare steps. I don't always apply a toner, but it's great to have an AHA exfoliant, especially one with such a great blend of acids that would work to exfoliate my skin and keep my pores clean. So I like having this, but again, nothing I would run out and get again. So from the skincare lineup, the face wash, the scrub, and even the moisturizer. But the toner, I can probably skip out on. The lip balm, which also falls under skincare, I could care less. Like, this isn't really that great. 
I have other lip balms, lip oils that I prefer. So I don't need that one, okay? So the lip balm completely out, don't care about it. Now let's jump into the actual makeup. The Diffusion Dew, you can probably already tell, I don't like this, okay? Not for my oily skin and not for how I prefer to present to the world. I don't wanna look like a greasy mess going out in these streets, like, no, absolutely not. But I see this being great for someone who has maybe normal skin and you're looking for a skincare heavy tint that you can wear every day and you don't need a lot of coverage. This would be great, but I also see it as being a great mixer for other complexion products, right? So if you have a concealer that's gonna give you the added coverage and you just want a tint that's going to even out the rest of your complexion, great. But if you don't like a dewy finish, probably don't get this. If you don't like a glow, then don't get this because this is really glowy. The mica particles, you can see them, okay? It's kind of similar to the shimmer that's in the Makeup by Mario foundation, but because this has a very lightweight coverage, you can see the mica particles a lot more than you can see it in the Makeup by Mario one. It is evident that there is shimmer on your face. I don't want that for my life. No, 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 no. However, however, I do like it to mix in with other foundations and other complexion products. I would even use this as like a priming step for other complexion products. Like, look at this, right? This is with the Diffusion Dew concealer and powder. And my skin looks amazing. It feels really good. This doesn't feel greasy or heavy or oily. It just looks shiny, right? So it's kind of a toss up. On one hand, I absolutely hate it. Like I don't want to get it away from me, but then I've found a way to use it in a way that I can benefit from the glow and I can benefit from the skincare ingredients. So it's like, I don't know where I fall with that. If I was gonna use it alone, absolutely not get it away from me. But because I found a use for it, mixing it in with other products, I kind of don't mind it. I would not repurchase it though just for that purpose, but I can see someone enjoying it for that purpose. So here or there, depending on what you're going for. So, I mean, it's up to you whether or not you think it's worth it to get a product that's gonna make you extra glowy or that you can use as a mixer with other products. The concealer, don't like this either. It's too glowy. Again, it's something that I am going to use. I'm going to mix it with other concealers like under the eyes to give that, you know, hydrated skincare effect because under my eyes are dry. So I'm definitely going to use this up. This I would repurchase over the Diffusion Dew because the skin under my eyes is more normal. So to have a skincare rich concealer under there is actually not a bad thing. And this one has a beautiful lightweight coverage that works in tandem with more full coverage concealers. So I feel like this would be more useful for me in my everyday routine than the Diffusion Dew. If you have more mature skin, if you have really dry under eyes, this is great. But don't expect a lot of coverage. It's more like a light medium coverage. If you don't have a lot of hyperpigmentation or dark under eyes, this might be one for you to pick up. I do kind of like it, but not really. Like I wouldn't break the gates down to go and get it. But what I will break the gates down for are these powder products, okay? The setting powder, fantastic. I mean, look at my skin. The suede blurred effect, shut the door right now. I love this powder. What? Love this powder. Absolutely love the translucent powder. It is not gonna give you full-on coverage, but as you could see from me applying it, it will give you a little bit of coverage, right? So the translucent, what, no, the translucent tan shade is what I used. It's going to lighten up your skin. The translucent deep, which I have in my palette. If you're curious about this palette, this is from Kit Pack. These are great magnetic palettes. You will see them in an upcoming video but they're so useful for organizing magnetic pans. Let me show you how deep this powder is. The medium deep shade, it's richer on my skin. So I can use it all over, you know, just to darken up my skin. You know, if I get a tan, which I will be getting, 
you know but it's a little bit deeper so if you put it on damp foundation it's gonna be a little bit darker so that's why I stuck to the tan shade but I love this powder okay and I'm glad to have both shades and again you can buy a refill or buy it in the compact and the compacts are really beautiful I also surprisingly enjoyed the brow pencil this is the blade line I don't usually gravitate towards this shape of pencil I prefer a fine point pencil for my brows because I like the precision but I like the shape because it almost gives the effect of a powdered brow without having to powder my brow because the product can be easily diffused through the brows to give this powder finish and the color is spot on cool brown is great for me but I wouldn't recommend this pencil if you're looking for precision like the Patrick Ta pencil or the micro pencil from Benefit or even from Huda Beauty because this is not going to be comparable this is gonna be a thicker pencil. So if you're into that, I definitely recommend it. I will repurchase the refill once I go through this. I do also like the spoolie end, but again, don't expect precision. Even though they say you can create hair like strokes, like, I mean, it's thin enough that you can do strokes, but it's not gonna be ultra thin, right? I do like it though, I really do like it. So I will be grabbing a refill of this. Definitely recommend the pencil. The eyeliner, skip. You don't need this. It's okay, all right? It's an okay pencil, but there's nothing to write home about. I have other eyeliner pencils that I prefer over this one. And since it's a twist up, it's going to dry out faster than a sharpenable pencil, which you might not necessarily experience. This might take a while to dry out, but I just feel like there are cheaper pencils on the market and better performing ones, so I would skip the pencil. The brow gel is nice, you know what? I am not opposed to this brow gel at all. I like the wand. It's a longer wand that matches up to their mascara, and it's a nice brow gel. It doesn't flake. And even though my brows are kind of really crispy right now, they aren't immobile. Like they're a little bit flexible, right? So it holds everything in place. I do like the brow gel. Brow gels, I don't really care that much about. So I can give or take. I may purchase it. I may not purchase it, but it's a nice one. So if you wanted to grab it with the brow pencil as a kit and save, yeah, check it out. I do like it. The mascara. Let me tell you something about this mascara. I really do like the mascara. Now, I do have to use a lash comb to go through it and, you know, separate. But it's so richly black and it feels so comfortable. And the wand is really soft. So it isn't spiky. It doesn't hurt my lash line. It doesn't poke me in the eye. And the formulation is so rich. Oh my god. So I really like it. I would repurchase this as well. I would probably mix it or layer it with another mascara though just to get like the fullness if I could recommend another mascara it would be the Amico Lay but I kind of like this one as well I like to mix and match my mascara so I will use both and I would repurchase that mascara I do like it a lot the this thing this heat stroke cheat gel whatever thing I don't like it it's so glowy it's so dewy if you are in the market for a dewy gel blush sure go ahead if you have dry skin sure go ahead but if you have oily skin and if you don't want a dewy blush don't do it don't do it what I will use this for to get use out of it because it's not completely unusable for me is to layer it up over my finished face like this you know to give a little bit of like a highlighted glow rather than using it on its own because it was just too dewy but it gives a beautiful slight glow to the skin over finished makeup so I'll get use out of it but it's just not my go-to it's lightly pigmented so don't expect like a ton of color payoff but it's cute it's cute then we have the bronzers I love these bronzers as well I mean you see it on my skin you can't detect where it starts where it ends but it gives this like 
wash of color right it's not too overwhelming I feel like I want them to add more shade so we can have deeper shades shades with different undertones so we can pick and choose because I'm telling you this is one of the winner products in their line they're powders, okay? The suede finish, they're smooth, they're silky. They don't look cakey. They don't look like powder on the skin. They just look amazing. The shade I would recommend would be Equinox if you're my complexion because this is just a little bit richer than the Dune shade. It's gonna give you more color payoff. It's gonna be more versatile because you can share it out. You don't have to build it up, right? The Dune shade, you have to build it up to see more of the color and it's a little bit more on the gray neutral side so it's going to give you more of a true contour than a bronze i think this shade stunning love it but i like both shades and i like having both shades because like i said i can contour more with the dune shade and then bronze with the equinox shade love them the blushes the blushes they're so smooth and beautiful and there are shades for every complexion, okay? You can get a really light shade like the Celestial Rose. This would not be my go-to shade because it's a little bit too neutral, a little bit too muted and dusty. Not my favorite color, but let me tell you about... You know what I'm going to show you, okay? This one is Vivid Dream. It's stunning. It's my favorite shade. If I had to recommend one, it would be Vivid Dream. Stunning. Like, come on. And they blend out really well. They're seamless. They are blurring. They look so smooth on the cheeks. They're stunning. And you can go overboard, but you can pull it back really easily. I love that for me. The deeper shade, which is Crimson Sky, it's a little bit too rich for me, honestly, truly. I feel like this is just a little bit too overwhelming. But I love these other shades. They're more muted, right? Everyday blushes. This one is Apricot Glow, no, Amber Glow and uh, New Moon, okay? Love those. Even the pink, which is Fuchsia Flush, really pretty. So they have like a variety of tones to choose from. Some of the shades aren't as rich as they look on the website, so just be mindful of that, but I love these. I would recommend checking out a shade or two. They're stunning, and you can buy the refill, so you don't have to pay the full price for the compact and everything, but the compact, I mean, come on! Tell me these aren't beautiful, and they differentiate each of the products by the style of compact. So the blush is the light gold and orange, the blue one is the bronzer and then the silver gold duo is the face powder like that's so pretty the packaging overall of this brand is stunning okay the boxes are a little bit clinical for the actual skincare but the skincare packaging is really like really practical it's functional. They may even be a little bit more bulky than I would like. I would like them to be a little bit more streamlined, okay? But nice packaging. The makeup packaging is where they excel. I mean, these are so beautiful to look at. The mixed metal packaging. I mean, everything is so stunning. And even the boxes are color-coded to match up with the compacts. Isn't that fun? I mean, come on. This is modern. It has a fun twist to it. The refills come in little sleeves like this. Everything is recyclable. And I love that the brand has this more eco-conscious approach to their packaging, offering refills instead of having single-use plastic so you can refill your products. You don't have to just toss them out and buy a new one each time. Even with the brow pencil, like how many brands have a refillable brow pencil? You know, that makes so much sense to me. Why am I tossing out the spoolie and everything with the brow pencil? Like tossing out the baby with the bath water when I can just pop in the insert for the pencil and I love that they have the metal pens that you can just pop into a magnetic palette 
and they've also partnered with the plastic bank right and they are plastic neutral again recycling materials and helping to keep plastics out of our oceans I absolutely love that the one tree planted is another great aspect to the brand as well as the Trevor project so I love the ethos of the brand I love the packaging I love the price points even they're not too overly priced they match up with mid-range brands on the market even being on the lower side of the price spectrum so I just I'm just so excited about what this brand has in store if they do powder so well I'm kind of intrigued to see what they do with eyeshadows that would be very interesting to me but overall I love the brand I love the majority of the products that I've tried out I'm gonna use everything up and I will even try out new shades if they add it to the blushes because I love that so hopefully this video was helpful introducing this brand to you guys and demonstrating all the products I know it's a long video but it just made sense to me to do a long form video going through all the products and demonstrating them while I showed you up close shots and gave you product information along with timestamps so you can always use this video as a reference in the future and I hope it was helpful for you guys maybe I introduced you to a new brand that you may want to check out or maybe it's a brand that already excited you or you already knew about and you just wanted someone to talk about it so you could see the products in action and determine which ones you wanted to try out for yourself. Everything is available for purchase through their website and you get free shipping over $50, which it's easy to kind of get to $50. Just grab two products and you're already at that $50 price point and their shipping is really quick. I've gotten my products within three to five business days so I really appreciate their customer service and their shipping. And like I said, I'm really excited about this brand and to see what they have in store. I will also go ahead and leave links to my Instagram and Twitter where you should be following me along. And until my next video, which will be very soon, I'll talk to you. Bye guys.